that was a bit of a build-up, actually. Uh, when we pulled up, I was going, is there something else on tonight? <laughs> so, <laughs> I was affecting about four or five people, so it's really, really lovely. Thank you. So we, I basically come up with the title Democratising Place Branding, because quite often if you go to a, a city or wherever, they've got a big branding, and you, you can only use this in, these, in this way and that way, and you mustn't touch it, you must ask for permission. So the whole, what the projects we've been working on, and one of them doesn't even involve any design work or logo, but it's about shifting the narrative. Sometimes, again, that you have this, this is what we're going to be, this is our council or our government's coming and going, this is what we think it's going to be, whereas the whole concept is turning everything on its head almost like a reverse pyramid. So it starts at, it starts at you know, at, at the grassroots level. Um, so you find out those feelings and you, and you sort of distill it all right down into really concise messages and then you go back and say, is this what you mean? And, and when you get a consensus of yes, then you start to build around that. So you create the tools for the people to shout about it and then you give the tools out. So rather than saying, apply to us for this and for this brand and then we can look at your details or whatever, and apologize, I'm apologising if there's anyone that, that, that works in that stuff, but this is, this is the way that we've managed to make things way bigger than the budget should allow. Um, and then you build a powerful brand by saying it belongs to us all and use it in your own way and tell others about our place. So Totally Locally is... Uh, this, this wasn't my description, this was a, a press description, a grassroots people-led high street movement. And then I put on a, you know, this is a democratised brand in, in probably the biggest way possible you could ever have. Um, so it's free. It's an open source marketing kit for any town to download and use. My background is brand and brand strategy and design for like big corporates. And I, I had this thought, well, what, how would that be if you gave, if you took the stuff that you do for like a big organisation, a big corporate and gave it out to small businesses and that couldn't afford that and just see what they could do with it. Um, so it's just like the big guys do, but it's free and you can muck about with it and you can do your own thing on the back of it. So it's reconnecting communities to their high streets um, by showing them that, that how you're using local businesses makes the place they live better rather than going out to so Coles or Woolworths to get your stuff, you're going down there and that makes the whole place better and that starts to and that'll then, and there's a lot, I can go into a few case studies later, but like when that happens, you'll see that more businesses will start popping up and, and then they start popping up and then someone else goes, well, there must be a good place to start a business. So then, and you have this massive roll on effect. So, so we give the tools to the businesses so that they can run it for themselves. And we use this as one of our campaigns. We've got loads of little campaigns, but this is one of them. And this is, you know, shop like your high street depends on it because it actually does, you'll see in a minute. So the Totally Look is a step-by-step -step thing. So it's right from doing the f how to run your first meeting um, and right through to how to run a big event. And so sharing the ideas and proven concepts because it's been going for 10 years now, well, 12 years nearly, but 10 years in the open public. And we've made loads of mistakes and other people have made loads of mistakes. So we share that back and say, don't do that because this, this is how this works, that doesn't. Um, and it's quite self-policing actually. So it's, main, it's got three main elements. It's got the Totally Locally Town Kit, and then it's got um, a thing called Fiverfest, which since, I, since last time I was here, we created a massive national event that nobody pays to be involved in, and it has a huge impact on their, on their businesses. And then we've done some online stuff, which I probably won't talk about today, but during COVID, we were, I, I lost all my work during COVID, like within two weeks of, of lockdown. I, I had two years work lined up and it all went away. I'm uh, thinking, what am I going to do? And I couldn't get any furlough. So it's a bit of a strange one. And then, and then um, Visa came along to us and said, you've got this amazing network of towns. We want to help small businesses get online because most small businesses are not online. Um, so they came to us and said, would you do that? So we did. Um, we worked on about six towns and, and it had a big effect again, so really interesting. So we got, so that, so Visa saved us um, and they're lovely people as well, they worked really close to us. 
So it started here. This is Col this is a place called Calderdale. Um, the, the, the famous towns are um, Halifax, which probably most people haven't heard of, uh, apart from the bank, um, which it did start there. And then there's Hebden Bridge, which more people have heard of, even though it's tiny and punches above its weight. And then there's a place called Todmorden, um, which started the incredible edible movement. I don't know if you heard of that. The council came to me um, and said, we want to do a shop local campaign. We've got a small budget, would you do it? So we, we set up, got loads of things together and it, and it just, it went mad. It went absolutely mad, just that message really. And then and it tied it all together. So it's based on that, the five pound and there's we think called the magic tenor, which, which you were talking about earlier, Corbin, like the fact that if you were spend your money in one place, local businesses tend to spend with other local businesses. Um, and we did a whole study on that and we've got a campaign there that you can use to, to explain that. That's a real life case study, by the way. And it just shows the links of just one, one tiny shop in, um, not, near Nottingham. That local supply chain, it's the whole idea that it grows and grows and grows very quickly. So the exponential growth. So the fact that we started, you know, well, this is Andrea who has a farm shop near where I live. Um, and I just got chat to her one day and she said, I said, how many local businesses do you work with? And she said, well, and so we sat down and worked it all out. She had 33. And then we went to two of those and asked them and they had 20. So you, at that top level, you've 600 businesses all linked on one level. So if you go up another level, you've got thousands of businesses all linked together and one, one of them failing affects everybody. And you start to, you see this web of, of businesses all working together and how that can affect a huge community. And, the, the, and when you start adding to that, that's the thing that we found that people then all of a sudden started, well, I'm gonna, I'm gonna try and get some more. So you start, when you start adding to that, it starts to grow and the, commu and the, the economy gets stronger um, and a lot more sustainable. So really quick, but it had a huge impact in Calderdale and it actually people did change their habits. Um, and they were going in saying, I've come to spend my five pounds. And then it led to a rediscovery of, of the high street and the fact that actually just because I, rather than just running into a supermarket, I'm going here, I'm getting a conversation, and I'm getting something different. And it's not actually, sometimes it's not even, it's actually cheaper sometimes, um, which we've found on a few things. And then, so yeah, it really did work and it started to grow quickly. And then we got loads of press interest and, um, and loads of, then I got loads of people saying, can, can we come and do it in our town? And I just was like, the ingredients needed for this is just a collaborative bunch of people who love their town and want to share it with others, which is where we come into the whole place brand and things. And we always say there's no rules apart from one and we, and we say that. So the whole thing is about being nice, um, parking your ego at the door. We call it the economics of being nice. So the fact that that starts to create something that you didn't expect. So it's about people just doing it, no permission needed, uh, and including everyone, even if they told you that it's a load of rubbish at the beginning. So when you'll know yourselves if you've tried to do something in a community and then you start it, oh, I'm not doing that, it's crap, we've, we've tried it before, it doesn't work, blah, 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 blah. Let me think about it <laughs> and, and then, or it's all right, they did it, but it's different over there, it's, not, it's all the same, it's all the same. And, so the whole idea is, and then when somebody goes, oh, it is working, can I come on board? You've got to go, yes, of course you can. <laughs> and, and it does work. It really does work. And it starts to build different cohesions, encouraging each other and the economics of being nice. So that whole five pound message started to spread pretty quickly. Um, we've worked, we looked at it, uh, how many towns have actually used the kit and then uh, gone on to do other things as well. And it's about 130 towns in the UK which is quite a lot, but also we've had some in France, some in, who translated it through volunteers um, and then gave it back for other French towns to use. Um, no one's done it yet, but you know. Um, town groups basically own the brand and it comes back to what we, we, we're talking about and they can do what they want with it as long as they stick to a few really simple rules. So, you know, you don't mess with the logo and it's about independent businesses, not about supermarkets or and things like that. As part of the kit, we always used to have a, you do your five pound message and then you do an event. So you say the whole town or as many that want to get involved, put on a five pound special offer, which we're probably going to have to look at 
now that inflation's going so crazy at the moment. Ten dollars. Ten dollars, yeah. But, um, so the people in Waikiki Island did a ten dollar town thing. It was really successful. But the idea of that is like, if you're, if you're, sh it's all about this big voice. Like if you all shout together on the one, one voice, it's a much bigger proposition. So, you know, who's going to drive into town because one shop's got a special offer on? But if twenty shops have got a special offer on all at the same time, and they've all got the same posters, and they're all they're doing the same, and they're all using it on their social media, and they're all saying, "Come in this week, people come." They do come, and they. And they spend, and then we have a thing where you say, look, you put your offer in the window, but then you do a few extras and you put more in a pile and you swap. So you put in other people's offers in your windows as well. So you're creating trails. And I'm, 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 I'm actually not, this is not for you guys, if you don't want to do it. You know, I'm not saying do totally locally, but take this concept and apply it to whatever you want to apply it to. So this was a really quick one on Leek, but they did a totally locally Leek burger for five pounds. Um, and all the everything on the, men, in, in the in the meal, was sourced within 400 meters of the shop in front of the pub. It was so successful. They've done the, it's about 20,000 they've sold now. The, there's a whole thing about you do one product. And quite often people go in and not have no intention of buying that product anyway. But they know that if they're going in, there's a psychological thing of, you know, and and that might be 10 quid next year. You know, I don't know, but it, it gives you knowing that you've got. 50 pounds in your pocket, I'm going to spend 50 pounds today, I can buy five, ten things or whatever. It, it's a psychological thing. And, and again, it's like you say, and you're following a trail and you're making a day of it. So, but the beautiful thing about this is that, again, the BBC heard about it and BBC Breakfast came out and did a, a feature on the whole thing and, and how, you know, some of the suppliers there, so the baker there, he started on this illegal market that became when the council saw that it was good, they gave them a license, and now it's an 80 strong, um, ev every fourth Sunday, it's an 80 strong market, and everyone's within a 30 mile radius. You've got to make your own things, you can't buy things in, and, um, and um, Matt the baker there, he started on the market, and he was successful, and now he's got a huge bakery, and he supplies all the, all the shops and stuff, and there's a, quite a few of those as well. I stole that one from Amazon, you know, if you, Obviously, none of us shop on Amazon, but um, and and there's like you know if you buy something, it says oh if you like that, we think you like this. So we have got the shops. They say if you like our shop, we think you'll like this one, and oh, yeah. and, and yeah. that's really yeah. successful. And and then going back to that suppliers, how many suppliers you got? There's a poster to say when you eat and drink with us, or when you shop with us, you shop with another 55. I think the most we've found is 103 suppliers on this side. People love seeing collaboration, and that's yeah. and people don't expect shops to recommend other shops. And so the whole thing on this is like they are not, then they're not your competition, the allies, you know. So there's even a, there's even a, um, there's even a, a newspaper template you can download. There is a lot of articles already in there. And then this is Declaration of Independence, which I was quite proud of that title. <laughs> and that was that was done collaboratively with with the group. So it came from. Um, a little bookshop that had put a sign up saying the taxes I paid, the taxes we paid last year paid for six months training for a, a student nurse, Amazon's paid for none. And, and it was like, whoa. And, and that was a big, that was a big moment. And so we had a big discussion online with everything and we came up with this, this is like, we pay fair taxes. There's, there's actually a dollar one as well, spending 10, 10 pounds of us means up to 50 pounds going to back into the local economy which is the multiplier effect so there's loads of stuff yeah that's just some of the few things and then you'll see the did you know there and what's made locally and and it's all to download and then we just say do use the kit talk to others do something new share experiences and I we have a thing like say look it doesn't matter if you use it for six months and then go on to something else or use it for two years or five years or whatever it doesn't matter because as long as you've started a spark you know, and even if like no, you don't use any of it, if it starts to spark and, and you start doing things on your own and without waiting for someone else to do it, job done really. Because um, because like I say, we don't get anything out of it other than you know, I get a few trips now and then. You know, <laughs> it's just a seed to get people thinking differently. And and once people get confident, they start to do it. And this was um, a lady called Leslie who runs a little florist in a little. Um, very, very unglamorous town called Brighouse. I'm going to do a market in Brighouse. No one's ever 
and down the main. I want to do it down the main street, and everyone's like, "What? Nobody wants to go there." And they said, "I want to call it a totally local market." And I went, "Yeah, fine." And we helped her, and we worked it on it, and and everyone was going. No one's going to go, and um, three and a half thousand people turned up, <laughs> and and then this woman came up to me and going, and we we were stood there going, "This is brilliant." And then this woman came to me, "You're a disgrace." I said, what do you mean? She said, I've come here, there's nothing here. And I said, of course there is. And I looked and then everyone's packing it and we've sold out. <laughs> so, and, and then Leslie, I mean, so, I mean it was Leslie and, and, you know, it wasn't us, but she, she got to use the brand, which is what we're talking about here is, again, it's, she got to use a brand that people understood that if they turned up there, they're gonna, this is what they're going to get. Um, and then from that point, the council then turned around and said, too many people came, so you can't do another one. Um, <laughs> Because it blocked people were parking in the Tesco car park at the bottom and then walking across and uh, and credit to her and then um, and then the MPs waded in said yes they are and um, so they got another one and now they do it every four months uh, four, uh, sorry four times a year um, average eight and a half thousand people now um, but what it did do it started to give Brigas a reputation so this is one lady Leslie. And she just says, oh, I'm just really gobby. And that's what she says. And, and this one lady, um, it had a really high shop vacancy rate. You can't get a shop in Brick House now. So this was no council funding. The council worked really closely with us on giving us the stalls. Um, and they were really good with that. And they still are. But it was Leslie and a couple of mates that have taken a town that where nobody wanted to go to a place where people look at and go, how did they do that? Branding for place, if you're just going to change, do a start of doing a place branding, just because you fancy it, it's a bit of a vanity project really, so you need to know, is, you know, there's got to be a reason why you want to do it. So we always say, what's the challenge first, and that can be, we need more tourists, or we don't need more tourists, but we need people that live here to connect better, or we need just a sense of who we are before we go for something else. Um, so that, bringing it all together, so what do people say about the place, what makes your place distinct, what do you want to achieve? And I always put reality versus what the goal is. So, you know, we're going to be this. We are this. Well, you're not, but you might want to be in five years' time. So you create, what are you now? What would you like to be? And then, I always say five years because I think after five years, you need to look at it again because things change in five years. Um, and then distill it right down to really simple stuff and then democratise it. So the bit I love, the, the last bit is the bit I love the most. So th this is one, uh, an example of doing the whole bottom-up thing without changing a, a logo or a brand or everything. So this is a place called the Peace Hall in Halifax. I'm from Halifax, my family are from there. And in the middle of it, it was this building that was underused, run down. It had some shops around the edges. And so it was originally a um, 17th century cloth hall. And it's the last remaining one in Europe. And it's pretty spectacular. And but it was very unloved and it was the room the, the sort of myth is and I think it's true that it was in one it was one vote away from being knocked down to, to build a shopping centre um, and now again if you see the Gentleman Jack next series that's coming out it, it's featured in there um, uh, and it, it was where basically a lot of the wealthy um, cloth owners uh, uh, mill owners sorry got together and said let's let's do a vanity project to show how good we are and they built this beautiful thing and it was it's huge, and it was only open for two hours every week, where you could sell your cloth. So people came from miles over the hills, sold the cloth, and then the walls are because the cloth was so valuable in those times, um, so you couldn't get in. And they rang a bell, and then when the bell rang, you couldn't sell anything from there. So it's really interesting history, but it was really underused. I mean, that's the, that's the market there, and that's about as busy as it got and it just became really tired and if you were a shop owner like in the winter they would be wearing balaclavas and gloves to keep warm and and then it closed so they said if they got some funding to redo it um, then the, the whole strategy was like we're going to attract the tourists get all the tourists in on the first day that's the thing um, but in the background it had been closed for three years they said it was going to be between six months and a year um, it was way over budget um, and there's loads of rumours, and, and if you know the people where, from the area, as I said, they're hard, they're really, really hard. Um, and it's like, they're, 
the, the scamming us, they're taking all our council tax money, then. Da, da, da. they've nicked all the cobbles, there was a lot of cobbles on the, on the thing, and they're ruining it, they're taking the cobbles out, the cobbles were put in there in 1975 to try and make it look a bit older. <laughs> so, but they didn't know that, and, and, and everyone was angry, and yeah, so there was no communication whatsoever during the rebuild because there was a bit of internal problems. So they basically, everyone was really angry and they're going, I'm not going, I refuse to go in there. And it really was that bad. So the whole, I mean, that's the building now, which is like in a small northern town. So you think it would be like every, on everybody's list, but there was such animosity, you would no idea. It was, and they said, what can we do? So we, instead of going, this open to the tourists and that's it, we just went, I said, like, we engage with the public, the, the locals first. So we did a whole campaign around, we targeted locals, not tourists. So the whole thing was welcome back, not welcome. So everything, everything was based around welcome back. It was about showing a, a young version of it rather than what people had be, remembered it being, old and old people and damp and everything. And there was loads of events on, which was incredible. And that was the opening day, and we had 26,000 people. Mm. And we put on street entertainers and everything. And it, but the, the reason why is because it was local people first. Because they become your ambassadors, and they, once, you, once you engage with them and you say, this is, this is yours, it's not, it's not I'm coming in to tell you that this is, you know, you're not, you know, people saying, I'm not going to be welcome there anymore, am I? Because it'd be too posh for me. And, um, so what's happened since, it, no, it's everyone's pride and joy, so this is, honestly, the gigs that they've put on, I mean, I, I don't work with them anymore, so, um, but it was, it was, it's just wonderful to see, and I, I, was, I was there the other week with um, Nikki, the chief exec, and it's up for um, an urbanism award of how you transform a place. So this is, you go back from, the biggest ambition was they were going to have a, a local Pink Floyd tribute band last um, June. There was Paul Weller, Noel, um, Noel Gallagher, Tom Jones, Sheik, and like, and this is a small town where nobody used to go to. So, you know, it's way bigger. All, all this stuff has happened since I've, I've not been there, but I just wanted to sort of say, and quite often most of the people that go there are from the local area, but they just, they love it. They'll go, I can't believe Paul Weller's coming to Halifax. You know, it would never have happened before. But it's that element of what we've talked about through all of here. If you do something, it's for everyone. And when, as soon as you give that power to everybody to, to own it, whether it's a building or whether it's the brand or whether it's you know, just a, your high street and working together, if you give that over and you don't make it precious and, and then people go, well, I can do what I want with it and realize you don't need permission to do stuff. Um, that's how you create this cohesion. And, and, and everyone becomes shouting about the same thing and the pride goes up and the businesses connect and, and then more businesses come and that's about it really. Yeah. So, yeah.